Hello there and welcome to the Dex Lock Show. This is a brand new web series where I, your host Dex, go through the mainline Pokemon games and see if not only I can Nuzlocke each game, but continue playing them until each new Pokemon has been captured. I wanted to start off with my favorite main series games, the Hone games. Growing up, I always had Sapphire, but later was able to play Ruby. I always tended to stick to a very linear team and similar teams through the countless playthroughs I did. But with this new challenge, I could widen my approach to team building, pushing me to really understand every Pokemon and their usability. So without further ado, let's look at the rules. Similar to a regular Nuzlocke, I can only catch the first Pokemon I encounter on each route. But in the newly improved Dex Lock rules, it changes the standard by only allowing Hoenn Pokemon as captures. The rest of the regular Nuzlocke rules apply. No repeat encounters, faint is dead, no items in battle, level caps for each gym leader, etc, etc. With 125 new non-legendary encounters, we are sure to stumble across some unique teams. So let us begin our brand new adventure in the water-filled Hoenn region. I decided to choose Pokemon Ruby for our first Nuzlocke for the series. Professor Birch gives us the same basic introduction as he does every game and we finally make our way out of the sickening moving truck. We are able to set the clock and we miss our dad on TV. Checks out. We break into our neighbor's house to go find Mei, another trainer and our rival for this game. After hearing some strange noises in the woods, we go over to find the professor being chased by none other than a Poochiana. We are struck with our first dilemma of the show. Who should our starter be? I decided my best bet was to go with Trico as grass types aren't exactly the most common in Hoenn and it would be the most useful in preparing for the first gym against Roxanne. After saving the professor, we are sent to go locate his daughter. Isn't that supposed to be his job? You know what, whatever, we'll go save him and find his daughter. May now has a Torchic, which takes us to yellow, but after some leers, Torchic is a two-shot while Trico is left in the red. Finally, returning to the lab, we are given some Pokeballs so we can get other team members and another step for completing the Pokedex. Okay. So this is the map view. It allows you to see where I am at and what Pokemon are available for encounters. Route 101 has three different encounters, a 10% Poochiana, 45% Zigzagoon, and a 45 Wurmple. We end up finding the Wurmple, which is actually great, putting our total Pokedex to two. Getting Wurmple now blocks further routes encounters, allowing for more rarer encounters. Route 103 has a 30% Poochiana, 60% Zigzagoon, and a 10% chance for a Wingle. We end up with the High Chan Zigzagoon, which again is good now to give way for rare encounters later. This also brings our counter to 3. Lastly, before we get to Petalburg, we can in get an encounter on Route 102. This route has 6 different possible encounters with Poochiana, Zigzagoon, Wurmple, and C-Dot, Ralt, and Surskit all being less than 5% encounters. As I said before, now that we have caught Wurmple and Zigzagoon, we have four different encounters. Unfortunately, we get the common counter of Poochiana, bringing our counter to four. We then level up our Pokemon and Wurmple not only evolves into Silcoon, but then quickly evolves again into Beautifly, bringing our counter up to six. We met up with our dad as we help Wally catch a Pokemon of his own. On Route 104, we have a potential chance to get Zigzagoon, Wurmple, and the rare 10% encounters being Wingle and Taylor. Again, because we caught Wurmple and Zigzagoon, we are locked in with either Taylor or Wingle. We get Wingle, which is a super strong Pokemon with its evolution Pelipper, bringing our total to 7. Finally, we reach Petalburg Forest, and for the last time I will be going over encounters that we cannot catch due to the repeat clocks. We could get Shroomish, Zigzagoon, Taylor, Wurmple, Silcoon, Cascoon, or Slackoth, with our only real encounters being the Shroomish, Cascoon, Slackoth, and the impedingly rare Taylor. Miraculously, we get the Taylor, and after, we fight a Team Magma Grant and get an easy win. Before Roxanne, we get one last encounter. Sadly, we get Wismer, 
The reason I didn't want Wismer is because we are guaranteed a Wismer in the cave nearby. Either way, we can increase our total counter and our team is ready to take on Roxanne. Roxanne's surprisingly brittle rock Pokemon are no match for Trico's Absorb. Needless to say, this gym wasn't much of a challenge. Trico does so well that it levels up and evolves into Grovile. Directly after the gym, we can do our civic duty and save Pico. Pico can rest easy knowing that we will always be there for them. After that, Mr. Pico takes us to Duford, allowing us a final encounter before the next gym, being Makuhita. We could have had a Mawile, but we would have had to repel to get deep into the cave, so it wasn't really going to work. Our Petalburg Talo takes on the fighting Pokemon like it's no challenge. Brawly is able to heal his Pokemon, but Talo's wing attack continues to diminish Brawly's team, earning us the second badge. Steven Stone has gotten distracted in a cave, so we find him talking to himself. Steven is a little odd, I suppose. We go to the ship builder and save him and his secret submarine plans. Taylor again leads the charge and takes down the grunts. After, our Pokemon can level up more due to the increased level caps, allowing some of them to evolve. Poochiana evolves. Zigzagoon evolves, and lastly, Wismer evolves, bringing our Pokedex total to 14. The next route has some new possible encounters, but we land on a Manetric, bringing it to 15. The pre-third gym Mayfight arrives, and I thought I was prepared. I couldn't be more wrong. The battle starts out strong with Mighty Anna howling to set up, but then going down quick to Combuskin. Aye, Karumba. We revenge kill Combuskin and her last Pokemon Shroomish to prepare us for our last pre-third gym encounter, Rosalia. Taylor also gives way for evolution, bringing our Pokedex total to 17. Alright, now we've arrived at the third gym. My strategy for this battle is to surprisingly use our new encounter, Rosalia. Rosalia gets access to various health regaining moves, so my goal, firstly, is to set up Leech Seed along with stacking some growths. Wow, that's kind of hard to say. This allows me to take out the Magnemite, the Voltorb, and with a few more attacks, the Magneton. Across the next three routes, we only get three different encounters, being Numel, Torkoal, and Spinda. This brings our total to 20. Next route has four different encounter options, but we end up with the strongest being Zangoose. For the first time in the run, I miss an encounter because I ran out of Pokeballs. Sorry, Soul Rock, I guess I'll have to save you for the next run. We luckily get a Manetric in the nick of time for a Maxi fight. This boost in base stats makes Maxi a more tolerable fight, but with a few sacks to keep Pokemon who still need to evolve, we lose Rosalia and Lanoon, both great members, but we must press on. Randomly, we pick up a Spoink, bringing our total to 25. This brings us to the fourth Fiery Furnace, Flannery. Flannery begins with the Slugma, but Pelipper is too strong and water guns it again and again, using up Flannery's potions. Torkoal comes out next and paralyzes Pelipper, rendering him too risky. You know, I decided my best bet is to sack Pelipper in favor for a clean switch to our Numel. Numel hits a strong magnitude 7, but now it's too low, so I switch to Hariyama, who uses Fake Out in a Vital Throw, which just isn't enough to take it out. Hariyama goes to 11 HP, surviving an attack and getting us the 5th Gym Badge. After all that, we have 3 new possible encounters with Trapinch, Cacnea, or Baltoy. Honestly, all three are great Pokemon, so I'm happy with any of them. We get Cacnea, so now we have another Grass Pokemon who can help with later gems. Even though I said Grass Pokemon were going to be rare, we somehow keep stumbling upon them. We also picked up the Claw Fossil, allowing us to head back to Rustboro to revive it. We receive a very Freya Anorith. Right. Going up against my father, my strategy is very clear. Power. Psyching's ability prevents it from attacking every other turn, 
If I can hit a fake out the first turn, it will allow me to set up some bulk ups. Then I hit a vital throw to finish his first slacking and then risk a powerful slash from his second Pokemon. Finally, his last slacking is out and I set up one more bulk up leaving me on 5 HP. I go for a vital throw and take out the slacking. I think I'm getting a little too risky with some of these gym fights. Then the routes leading to Fortree City, we can pick up a bulky Tropius, a Valiant Absol, and oh yeah, we also got a cast form from the Weather Institute, but I'm not really going to use it, so just another one for the counter, I guess. We have a May fight in between the 5th and 6th gym, but it really isn't much to mention with Manetric just completely sweeping our team. But going into the 6th gym, I switch up my strategy completely. I have a bunch of encounters I haven't really used yet, so I go ahead and level up my Pokemon, giving me a Grumpig. This allows my Pokemon to overpower the opponent's team. Her Altaria takes great damage from Grumpig, but I switch back to Manetric after Grumpig dies to knock out the scary dragon. Her Skarmory becomes very threatening as once again our Pokemon is on red, but Ledger can clean up and finish the fight, bringing our death counter to 5. Yikes. Kinda a deadly fight. On the way to our next stop we find a new encounter, but I kill it. Yikes, yikes, yikes. May comes to interrupt, but we take her out with no problem, utilizing our starter along with Hariyama to do an insane damage with some critical hits along the way. Now we are getting to the end for possible encounters. Mount Pyre provides three different encounters and we land on the common Metatite. In the ice cave we sadly found another actually good encounter. That's alright I guess, just more to look forward in the next attempt. Our starter then finally evolves into Sceptile, Anorith evolves, and so does Loudred. This takes us to the 7th gym, the only double battle gym fight. My strategy is to utilize Absol's dark typing, Absol hits bite while Loudred tanks and hits screeches. Eventually I switch my tank to the newly evolved Armaldo and we start taking down Tay and Liza's team one by one. The Lunatoon tries its best to survive with potions but after the power of my Pokemon she stands no chance. Finally we get a water Pokemon on one of the routes. This allows us to get a Wailord. We then catch a Clam Pearl and a Mawile on the way to completing the story section of the game. Against Groudon we have a little bit of an issue. Groudon begins just drowning my team count, killing Absol, bringing X-Blood super low, killing Camerupt, and then allowing me to run out of the battle. Yikes, definitely not what I anticipated. This brings me to Evolve Metatite to Metacham, preparing us to take on the 8th and final gym. I start out with Sceptile as it easily takes down the Love Disk in one hit. Mulse's next Pokemon however becomes a challenge as its attack takes me to just over half. I switch to Hariyama to take, but Celio does insane damage to him as well. I hit a Rock Smash to kill it, but when Whiskash comes out, it confuses me, leaving me to hit myself. I then do some switching around until I bring out Sceptile again to take out Whiskash. My Lodic the Ace is out, so I bring Exploud out to tank. Exploud goes for a Screech to lower my Lodic's already bulky defense. Explode takes a hit to land another Screech, and at this point, with most of my team's health being low, I decide my best bet is to sack the Exploud that has stayed with us for so long. From a little Wismer to the interestingly looking Loudred, this Pokemon had stayed with us for everything. I decide to go for Screech once more as a farewell to Exploud. But Exploud it survives on 1 HP. Now this is my chance to regain this fight. Knowing how hard Exploud worked, I knew I couldn't sack her. I quickly switch to Armaldo who hits an ancient power. Armaldo then survives on the red. I go for Protect to see what my Lodic's going for next. I switch to my last full HP Pokemon, Medicham, to finish off my Lodic, bringing in Seeking, who hits a strong attack, also bringing me to the red. Oh my god, this is going to be a match to remember if I can pull through. I risk a crit on Sceptile to bring it out, which then brings it to the red. Ah! One high roll or a crit could kill me. I risk everything to go for the Leaf Blade, and Sceptile survives on 1 HP to survive and hit a super effective Leaf Blade. This is 
impossible. The impossible is possible. The losers have won. We did it. We miraculously won in fashion. That fight could have ended the run, rendering almost all of this useless. But my Pokemon toughed it out. Not one, but two 1 HP survives. Crazy. But the challenge is not over yet. Now we take on the Elite Four. I bring the team seen prior, but changed out x for the Zangus cut earlier, so I could have a little more offensive team. Sydney's up first. I begin with Hariyama to set a bulk up and take some of Mightyana's shots. One vital throw kills it. Up next is Shifri, who goes down in one shot. His Absol actually does great damage, but once again goes down in one hit. His Cacturn follows suit with a quick kill. Adam takes a hit from Sharpedo, but takes it down, bringing itself to the low red. Finally ending the battle, we can heal up and continue to the next fight. Phoebe utilizes ghost types, so Zangoose fights through the Dusclops confusion to take it out with some pursuits. Bennett comes out but gets low before Phoebe uses a full restore. I switch up to Whale Lord who begins to drown her Pokemon with Surf, getting to 3 HP himself in the process. I once again switch to Sceptile to do good damage, and then again to Armaldo who just gets unlucky with confusion getting at the red. I switch to Medicham who does good damage but dies. Yikes, we already have 5 Pokemon for the fights moving forward, not a great sign. I stupidly switch to Hariyama for no reason because it has no attacking moves, so Sceptile comes back out to tank heavy damage and risk itself through confusion. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Also, I apologize for dropping the layout for a minute. The files layout video got messed up, but luckily I still had the original gameplay, so enjoy some full screen action. Regardless, with only 5 members now, we move to the ice team. My plan for this fight is to just completely sweep. This is why I added Zangus to the team. He is an absolute offensive tank. After setting up some sword dances, all of Glacius team members fall one by one to the weapon himself, getting us just one step closer to the champion. Finally, Drake, Dragon user, brings in some tough Pokemon for our Wimble 5 Pokemon team now. I'm going to set up some sword dances with Zangus while Shellgon protects and then try to sweep his team. It begins with Zangus setting up plus six which allows us to take out his Shellgon, his Altaria, his Flygon, his other Flygon, and his Ace Salamence all in one shot. This leads us to the final challenge. The man, the myth, the stone, the Steven Stone that is. Steven starts out with his Skarmory as Whale Lord can begin to sweep, taking out his first two Pokemon, no challenge. Gridilly, on the other hand, comes out and Hariyama switches in to kill it, but gets to the red as a result. I decide to sack Hariyama as my own Armaldo attacks his, taking his out. Then his Claydol finishes my Armaldo, and I bring out my Sceptile to do great damage, resulting in a 1v3 situation. Dodge should be in my favor, so I start using not effective Leaf Blades to activate his Metagross's Berry by the time I sack Sceptile to bring Zangus out. Zangus then sets up a Sword Stand, bringing it to 2 HP after a Hyper Beam. Oh my gosh, I'm really cutting it close. All I need is a Critical Slash. One Critical Slash will let me walk away champion. Slash hits, and doesn't get the crit. I think I'm done for, but luckily, due to his Hyper Beam, Metagross now has to recharge, so one more Slash should kill it. I hit the slash and the Metagross has to be at 1 HP. I mean, I don't know how much lower I could have gotten him. The one time the opponent gets a save and it's exactly when I don't need it. Zangoose goes down the next turn to a Hyper Beam. Thinking this has sealed the fate of the run, I send out Whale Lord, already on red, who has to then take Spike's damage, bringing it down to 11. But then I remembered the Metagross must recharge from the Hyper Beam. This allows me to hit a final surf to finish the fight. Honestly, that was a really stressful fight. Not like I had great encounters left, but possibly I should have tried to plan further in the future instead of being willing to sack a, a Mon 
knowing I have another encounter, this run has taught me a few lessons that will mend my plan going forward. Regardless, let's review how I did. Over the span of this game, I captured and evolved 43 different Hoenn Pokemon. I definitely tried some new Pokemon with Grumpig, Wailord, and Medicham, although Medicham didn't really end up being useful. With 82 possible encounters left, we'll just have to see how playing Sapphire goes. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I will see you all next week as we tackle episode 2. See you later!